Welcome back. In the last session, we parameterized the file names and the relative URLs within the datasets, but we used variables within the pipeline so that we could test the changes in the datasets. But in this session, we want to parameterize the pipeline itself so that it becomes truly generic, and then we can pass on the parameters from the trigger. So let's convert these variables into parameters. I'm going to copy this and create a new parameter here, and then copy another one and create a new parameter here. Let's delete these two variables. We don't need them anymore. So the parameters, we don't have a default value. We are going to pass them at runtime. So before we do that, we need to change the copy activity to use the parameters as opposed to the variables. As you can see, it's in red. So that's an error, it doesn't exist. So let's delete that and replace with the parameter. So in this case, this is for the sync. So we need the parameter sync file name. So that is at pipelines.parameters.sync file name, click OK, and similarly, we want to change the source as well. So that is going to be the URL. So let's pick the URL parameter we just created and click OK. So that is now truly generic, we got no parameters, nothing hot coded. But having said that, we called all our datasets in the pipeline as cases and deaths. So I think it is better to change them now to reflect what they really do. So if I click on the source dataset itself, in order to change the name of the dataset, we need to click on this here and let's call it as ECDC. So that will be generic for any ECDC data, any ECDC SV data. And similarly, let's do the sync as well. And we will change that to ECDC here. And the pipeline itself, we can change that as well because it's not only doing cases and deaths now, it is doing all datasets. So if I click on the properties here and change that to ingest ECDC data, and let's make sure that the copy activity is still okay, And if we go back to the pipeline, that's pointing at the new source and the sync is pointing at the new sync as well. So all the changes are made and the pipeline's truly generic. Let's debug it. But when you debug, now it's going to ask for the values for the parameters. So let's pass on the URL for the hospitalization data, which is going to be the URL here. Let me paste it. And the sync file name is going to be the hospitaladmission.csv. So let's click OK and now that's running. So let's have a look in the output section here, and it's been queued. And the pipeline succeeded, as you can see it's copied all the data like it did before, which is great. But you might be wondering how to pass the parameter values at runtime without manually doing it. That's when triggers come in. Before we get into triggers, I've just noticed that. Actually we haven't renamed the activities. So let's just do that to reflect what it does. So now it's not only doing the cases and deaths data, it's doing the entire ECDC data we wanted. So I'll call that copy ECDC data. And to create a new trigger, switch over to the Manage tab again. And click on Triggers, and now click New. In the last module, we created the event trigger for getting our population data, in that case, which is appropriate. But here, event trigger is not an appropriate one because that file in the URL will always exist. So ECDC would update the data anytime they want. They've got the data available, but the file will always be there. So we can't use an event trigger. So we should either go for a schedule trigger or a tumbling window trigger. In this case, schedule trigger would be appropriate because we are not looking at slices of data. We are looking at getting the data at a certain point. So let's create a schedule trigger. I'm going to call my schedule trigger. As tr underscore ingest underscore hospital underscore admissions underscore data, click schedule and start date. I'm going to go for the current time so that it runs and we can see the results. And use the recurrence as 24 hours or even one day because we want it to run every day and get the data and leave specify end date unticked as we don't want the end date. Or if I say I want to stop it in a couple of days time, I can go for end date, but I'm going to leave it as no end date. And you can have the trigger activated or not activated. 
So I'm gonna say I want the trigger to be activated. But before we publish the trigger, the triggers needs to be attached to the pipeline. So if we come over to the pipeline and then add trigger and click on newer edit and choose a trigger so we got two triggers. But we want the hospital admissions data. Is the one we want but as you can see, these are the details we gave when we created the trigger. If you click OK, now it should ask for the parameter values. So we can pass in the values we want to pass, which is the URL, relative URL for the source. And the target was going to be the hospital underscore admissions dot CSV. So let's keep that as well. And if you click OK, and then if you publish, then that'll tell you it's got the pipeline and the two dataset changes we made. And then a new trigger to publish. So click on publish and it'll publish. One thing to bear in mind is triggers only run when they're published, until then they won't run, unlike a debug which will run anytime. So in order to monitor the triggers you come into the monitor button here, and then you can see whether a trigger is running. So let's click on refresh. The trigger is not running because while I was talking the time has passed. As I said before in the trigger session, the schedule trigger won't run for a future time. So to make it working instantly let's keep it 12 past 10 as it is current time is 12 past 8. So we have to wait for 2 minutes then trigger gets executed. So hopefully it publishes within a minute and then it should start running at 12 past 10. Yep, as you can see, the trigger has come in and it's run through. So if we look at what it's done we can see. Click on the pipelines and go there, but before that, if you click on the properties, you'll know actually what time the trigger has come in and run. Okay, let's expand that. So in this case, actually it came in at 12.10 p.m. and it ran through. So that is the Indian time, and it's got the name and all the information there as well. And if I want to see what it's done, I can click on the pipeline, click to get there. And then if you click on the spectacles here, that will tell you actually the file being copied, so that is from the HTTP to Data Lake Storage Gen 2. And it's the same file that's being copied. So that succeeded. So what we can do is we can create another trigger, another four triggers in here, one for each of those datasets we want to copy, and they'll execute the same pipeline and we will have all the data copied across. But that is still four triggers we need to create in order to copy the four datasets. But we've only got one pipeline, but I think that is still excessive. So we got something better we can do within the pipeline in order to copy the four files at once and having just one trigger. So that's what we are gonna see in the next session. See you then.